The brain is a computer, and it's the most sophisticated computer that we know about, that we have. And if a few computer chips should short circuit, the computer may malfunction. With the brain, if there are some brain cells, which are actually computer chips, that have strong electrical surge, a seizure can occur. And that's what we call a seizure episode or a seizure spell. Epilepsy is a predisposition or propensity for having seizure episodes without provocation. So seizures are the episodes, or if you want to call it the attacks, but epilepsy is the medical condition predisposing to the spells or the attacks. How many people in this country have epilepsy and seizures? We're talking about probably around 4 million. We know that 3 million have active epilepsy, and the way we define active epilepsy is that they are still taking medicines or they have had at least one seizure in the past five years. But if you take people with inactive epilepsy or seizure disorders, you probably could add another million, and you're talking about 4 million here in America. And every year, 200 new 200,000, excuse me, new cases of epilepsy are added each year. Now, one other sort of, uh, two other figures that may bring out the importance of epilepsy and seizure disorders is that in a lifetime of about 80 years, one out of 10 persons will experience at least one seizure. And about three to four people will have epilepsy diagnosed in a lifespan of about 80 years. So it's not really that rare a condition. Here at the Mayo Clinic, we provide comprehensive epilepsy care. And by that, uh, I mean people of all ages with epilepsy and seizure disorders. We employ uh, very advanced technologies uh, to localize the seizure and help characterize the type of seizure the patient has. Uh, We also offer surgeries Uh, that may be very complex in patients with more complicated forms of epilepsy. The treatment of epilepsy or seizure attacks will have to depend on whether the epilepsy or seizure attacks are mild or more severe uh, and or depending on the prognosis. If the seizure spells have been triggered by something that can be easily corrected, then drug treatment may not be necessary. But majority of the cases of epilepsy would have to be treated. And remember, the definition of epilepsy is propensity for having seizure spells, and that propensity is not easily reversed in many patients. So drug treatment, not easily reversed without drug treatment. So drug treatment would become necessary. So that's the most common type of treatment that we would start off with. About 70% of patients who start out with anti-seizure medications will do very well. They will tolerate the medication and they will not have seizures. If they have seizures, they may be minor in terms of the intensity or the frequency. If that doesn't work, I think patients need to be considered for other types of treatment. The other types of treatment available would be surgical treatment. So patients would have to undergo evaluation specifically to see if their seizures can be treated surgically. The type of technology we have developed here at the Mayo Clinic and contributed to the epilepsy surgery evaluation, the first is the detection of a very specific type of scar tissue in the temporal lobe which is a part of the brain sitting lower here between the eye and the ear. That type of uh, scar tissue, which we call sclerosis, happens to be the underlying abnormality of many persons with hard to control or uncontrolled epilepsy. The other contribution is our development of what we call SISCOM, which is technique of using a radioactive dye injected during the seizure in order to help identify where the seizures are coming from. Uh, Typically, a positive study would consist of a hotspot seen on the picture that would correlate very well with the onset of seizures. This allows us to characterize the type of seizure 
and also just as importantly, give us a clue of where the seizures are coming from. The goal is to assess the patient with these methodologies to find out if surgery can be safely and effectively performed on the patient. There are other forms of treatment, stimulation and diet. By stimulation, we mean that uh, there has been a device which has been used clinically for some years now, which we call the VNS, or vagal nerve stimulator, which is implanted underneath the skin, similar to the cardiac pacemaker. And the electrical pulse is sent to the brain through a nerve ear in the neck. That type of treatment has been effective in many patients. Uh, in terms of dramatic uh, improvement or control of seizures, it's a minor percentage of patients who got implanted. Another type of treatment is diet treatment, but it's a very specific diet treatment that has been scientifically proven uh, to work. And in fact, the earliest, uh, one of the earliest studies uh, was done here at the Mayo Clinic. And it's what we call ketogenic diet. It's a diet that is designed in such a way to increase a particular type of chemical in the body, which we call ketones, and thus making the blood a little bit more acidic uh, than usual. We also have drug trials going on because we do need to continue to develop uh, more effective and better tolerated medications. We don't expect majority of patients with epilepsy to undergo surgery or having to need ketogenic diet. So drug treatment will continue to be a very important part of our research. Also, um, together with our genomics group, uh, we hope that, that uh, we be able to participate uh, with our own specialists and experts and others around the world in finding out if there is any way of making seizure medication molecules more effective in terms of addressing the part of the brain that has the abnormal surge of electricity. There is a lot of exciting research going on uh, here in this country and around the world. And I'm also very excited about research that my colleagues uh, and I are doing. For example, uh, we have research that has shown that we could one day detect seizure activity going on much earlier than what we know about today. That is extremely important because it will give us a better understanding of why a group of brain cells should suddenly abnormally have a surge of strong electricity. If we can find an earlier electrical onset, that is to say the strong surge in electricity, than what we can detect now, it may be a more accurate localization of the seizure detonator to allow us to more accurately take out the spot that is really giving seizures. This is all still ongoing research, but it, the research results have been progressing very encouragingly and a very, at a very fast pace. And uh, we're continuing to participate in that type of uh, research. Other areas that we're continuing to look at would be the prognosis of uh, seizures in children and in adults. Uh, we need more information about uh, how soon can we tell that this child is going to do well or this child may not do as well. Uh, we continue to do research to study the patient's seizure behavior to see how important it is in helping us decide where the seizure is coming from. So these are what we call uh, clinical research uh, that would still be very much needed in the science of uh, epilepsy and seizure disorders.